Hi, this is Discrete Math, Section 1.2, Group Ranking Methods and Algorithms. We're going to look at a lot of different ways to figure out who a winner is in a potential runoff or uh, election, whatever you want to call it. And so the different methods that we're going to be going through is a plurality method, which is just whoever has the most votes, boredom method, which means that we're going to assign points to each place that uh, somebody's in and then tally up the points, runoff method, we're going to take who uh, has the most first place votes and compare them. In sequential runoff, we're going to eliminate candidates one by one and then do a head to head at the end. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So first of all, if we look at plurality, plurality method, what it is is when we have the most first place votes. Whoever has the most first place votes will win. And then also we might ask, is it a majority winner? If it's a majority winner, then it has over 50% of the votes. So if we look at this setup here, first of all, maybe we should talk about the preference rankings here. What happens is that if I have four candidates, A, B, C, D, this means that A came out first in a selection from eight different people, B next, C next, and D after that. So D finished last for these eight people. If you go over here, similarly, B is the first choice of these five people. C, D, A all fall in order after that for these five. So on for six of these people with this ranking, and so on with this many people. Seven of these people have this ranking. So if we look at first place votes, we see that A got eight first place votes here. B got five. C got six, and D got seven. So with this, A turns out to be the winner. When you do your homework, I do want you to write this out so that I know what you're doing. Now, the other question is, is A a majority winner? Well, if you look at these votes, 13, 19, looks like 26 different votes, eight is not half of that. And so eight is not a majority winner. So A is not a majority winner there. Okay, moving on. Uh, that one should be pretty straightforward. As long as you understand this preference schedule, you should be okay. Now, if we go to the border method, border method assigns points, values to each candidate in reverse order of rank. So in this ca case, I'm going to use the same preference schedule here. In this case, we still have A, B, C, D, four different candidates. And with four different candidates, I can go four, three, two, one. So first place, we'll get four points. Second place, we'll get three points. Third, two, and fourth, one. And so under this system, what you do is just accumulate points based upon how many people vote for you. So if you look at this down here, what we have is, so I'm going to take each one of these here and assign each one points. So if I look at this, this first place vote is going to get four points. This B is going to get three and two and one for all eight votes. Similarly over here, four, three, two, one for all five voters here. So B is going to get four times five. That's going to be 20 points that B is going to get for that situation. And we can complete the other two. So if I want to find out the total amount of points that A has, I can kind of put all these things together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four points for A here and multiply it by eight. So we try to be consistent, eight votes gave A four points each. And then if I go to the second one right here, five votes give A one point. So I'm gonna go five times one. And then if I go to this next one, oh, A is at the bottom again. So it's gonna be six people giving one vote. And then I go here seven times one. So I'm going to total that up, and that's going to be the number of points that A is going to have. Now, if we look at B, B gets three points for this situation right here. But then it's times eight people. So B would go eight times three. Now, notice this number and this number are the same. So I'm going to be able to go here five, five times if I look at B. Oh, B got four there. And I think you can start seeing this pattern. I'm going to go six voters place B second. So they're going to get three points for each one of those six people. 
And then here, B is three points again. So it's going to be plus seven times my three. Okay, and I'm going to just clean all that up. Do pause and you do C and D, and then I'll show you the answers. If you want to organize this, sometimes you can just put eight parentheses, five parentheses, six parentheses, seven parentheses for all of them based on these votes. And then you can just put the numbers in there. So D, this one would be one. D here would be two and so on. And then I'll total those up. You can total those up too. Now go into your calculator if you want some shortcuts on how to figure this out. This is really slick and I, and I encourage you to try this. However, if I want to do, for instance, A. With A, I had eight. And then I want to go times my first value, which would be a four. And then I go plus five times one plus six times one plus seven times one. That would be for A. And then I hit enter. And then that gives me 50. Now, if I want to do this again, all I have to do is do the up arrow and hit enter. I have the same thing back. Now I can go back and edit. And so for B, for B, I have a three here. You'd have to look at your sheet. And then here I have a four. And then for six would be three. And for seven, it would be three as well. And there's 83. Now you can just jump up again and then go do C. I'll let you try that. What's really nice about doing it like this too is that I can just look right here and see one, two, three, four. I can see one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I saw a duplicate here, that meant I didn't. Um, I had a mistake. And then I see all these are the same, sixes are the same, fives are the same, eights are the same. So if you do it in this manner, you can double check your work very easily. Great idea to do. So going back to my sheet, I put in all those point values and you need to show me to show me that you're doing it right. And then you'd write the summary. B is the winner with 83 votes. This is why I don't like to use pen, but that's what happened. Okay, moving on, runoff method. Now with the runoff method, what happens is that you would eliminate all but the two with the most first place votes. So you strictly look at first place votes. Once you get down to two people, then you compare all the other candidates relative to that and go head to head. So what does that mean for us? So if I look at this, the runoff method, I look at A having eight votes and D having seven first place votes. B has five, C has six. So B and C have the least amount of first place votes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate B and C from every category. So I'm going to take B and C out here. Try not to hack things up too much because uh, you need to do other methods as well. But then I have B and C and B and C get canceled off there. So now all it is is a two horse race, so to speak. It's A versus D. So what happens here now is that if I tally up A, in this case right here for these eight people, A beats D. Here, D beats A. D beats A, oh, D beats A. So I'm gonna tally up eight votes for A, and for D, I'm gonna tally up, I'm gonna have my five, I'm gonna have my six, and I'm gonna have my seven. And so who's gonna win this one? D is the winner. With how many votes? If we can add, that would be 18. Okay, so that's the runoff. You eliminate the two. Well, it depends how many candidates you have, but you leave only two at the end to go head to head. You eliminate all the other ones that have the least amount of first place votes. A is above D here, they get the eight votes and D is above A here, five votes and so on. Okay, now the last method is the sequential runoff method. This one, is once you get it, it's okay, but you have to be able to go back to this method and get it well, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna eliminate the least, uh, the candidate with the least, you're going to do eliminate one at a time. The candidate with the least amount of first place votes, and then you're gonna shuffle everything up. So we'll show you how this works. 
So looking at this one, the one value here, the person who has the least amount of first place votes appears to be B right here. B has five first place votes, C has six, D has seven, A has eight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go across the board and eliminate B because B has the least amount of first place votes. So your first step is eliminate B. Okay. Now what happens though is that in this case where B was the top dog, well, who's the top dog now? Well, C is. So all of a sudden in this new orientation, C is the first place vote getter right here. I hope that makes sense. So when I look to do this again, so this says repeat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate the uh, candidate that has the least amount of first place votes. Well, if I look at this, A has eight, C has five, C has six, so a total of 11, and D has seven. So what happens now is that D has the least amount of first place votes because I'm combining both of these for C. Hope that makes sense. And so I'm gonna eliminate D would be my next step. So I go through and I eliminated all of the Ds. And I wrote down the step here as well. Do this for me so I know that you're doing it right. So you eliminate B first, eliminate D second. Now all you're left with are C and A. So now you just do a head to head with C and A. Well, who's gonna win this one? Well, A is above C, so A is the winner with eight. And this one, C is the winner, so C is going to accumulate those, C is going to accumulate these, and C would accumulate these. So what happens is that A is going to have eight, eight votes, and C would have, once again, the same number that we had before. C would have my five, that would be 11, 18. So who do we declare the winner? C is the winner. Make sure you write that down, okay? So this is the different methods that we'll be going through in this section. You need to practice this. Uh, I'll tell you the sequential runoff is the one that students tend to forget how to do it correctly. Please get it right the first time, and then it should be okay for you to remember those methods. So once again, we went through four different methods. Plurality method, whoever has the most votes wins. Most first place votes wins. Border method, where we rank things and place points on them. This occurs, the border method occurs in a lot of different places. For instance, football rankings or basketball rankings, uh, they do the border count method. And then a runoff method means that you eliminate the ones with the least amount of first place votes until you only have two left. And sequential runoff means that you do this one by one. Least amount of first place votes, then do it again, then do it again until you have two candidates left, and then just go head to head. All right, so that's 1.2, and then we'll try to do this in class, uh, the, the homework. That's where you get your practice. Thank you very much. Have a great day.